Hi there, I'm Anita Adams, the Executive Director of First Weekend Club, and I'm here in Berlin at the European Film Market with one of my favorite people, Jan Miller. Thank you, Jan. Anita. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jan is um, a pitching expert. She actually got her start in the film industry as an actor and a clown, if I understand correctly. And then you moved into um, more into film and TV by um, becoming instrumental in starting the National Screen Institute of Canada. Correct which is pretty impressive, wow. <laughs> and over the last 20 years, you have been honing and developing your pitching and content development workshop, which I, which I understand you now deliver that around the world, across Canada and at international festivals and markets. In fact, I go uh, in a cup, I'm teaching at prime time in um, Ottawa, and then I go to Mexico City to teach, and then Cartagena, Colombia. So it's very, uh, everybody needs to pitch, and everybody can use the support to help them focus their ideas, and I love doing that, so it's a good combination. Well, the very first time I met you was at a pitching workshop. I don't know if you know this, but years and years ago, a BC film. I was like my my start in the film industry. Probably. Did you take the workshop? I did, well, and I was. <laughs> of course, because I learned from the best. That was some time ago, but I was totally struck by you, and um, I pursued you, and I eventually got Jan to sit on my board of directors for a number of years, and she's been very instrumental with First Weekend Club. Very supportive so. of it, for sure, yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to talk to you today about pitching specifically, and I was hoping you could share with us and our members some of the key components of putting together a good pitch. It's a question that I often get asked, and I remember very early in my teaching of pitching, people would say to me, uh, well, if you're teaching pitching, show us the perfect pitch. And I would, ah! But I thought about it, and I thought, well, what defines a perfect pitch? And it's when the person wants to take another meeting. Then you know that you've succeeded. So what are the elements to help that person want to take the meeting and I think that key is that you research the person you're going to pitch to. No pitch is the same. You pitch a distributor different than a broadcaster, differently than an executive producer. Um, and if you're a director, you pitch differently than a writer or a producer. Uh, so I think key is knowing it's a conversation, which means it's also about listening. So when you go into a pitch meeting, I think people tend to think, okay, I have 50 minutes, okay, I'm going to talk for 50 minutes, because if I don't talk for 50 minutes, I'm going to leave. That like it, super fast like that. Like super fast about. to them without <laughs> breathing, and which, then they stop breathing. <laughs> but if you, take, if you sort of develop a pitch that takes about five minutes, and I really mean five minutes. So uh, not the elevator two-minute pitch thing? No, no. Well, I mean, that's another thing. Okay. But still, the goal of the pitch is the conversation. So you want, you want to bring together all of the elements that are going to be of interest, such as you want to have a very clear log line, a strong title that you use as a tool to attract a certain kind of audience, for example. You want to be able to tell the beginning, middle, and end of a story. That's an interesting thing that a lot of people debate about, well, should I give away the ending? Obviously, in a publicity sense, you never give away the ending. But when you're meeting with somebody who's going to be your partner... And potentially giving you money, they, they want to know what's going to know the happen. end. Yeah. Because they want to know, what do I feel at the end of your pitch? I'm assuming, maybe, what the audience feels if you do a good pitch. So your synopsis is beginning, middle, and end. And then being re really clear about what's original and different about what you're offering. Because there's so, look at, there's so many people with ideas out there and you need to identify not only the strength of your, pro, your project, but what makes it original and different. Right. Now, I've heard a lot of horror stories about writers meeting with broadcasters in bathroom stalls and sliding their scripts under a door. Sorry, I know the broadcaster. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe you can address some of the do's and don'ts of, of pitching. Well, I, again, if you think of it as a conversation, it's hard to have a conversation in a toilet stall. <laughs> uh, yes, I guess is. it's possible. <laughs> um, but also, I think, if you think about the people that you're pitching to, if you're at a market like this, it's not necessary 
that if you just meet somebody at a reception, you immediately have to pitch. And often they'll say, because they're tired, they'll say, so tell me about your project. P possibly they're not going to listen, they're thinking about other things. And I think it's way more interesting if you turn it around and say, well, I'd love to tell me about your project, but tell me a bit about yourself. You know, what, what's your background? What is your interest? So that's the, the writer saying that, or the director saying that to the broadcaster or whoever they're pitching. If they don't know the person. Right. If they know the person, right. then they absolutely yeah. begin with, um, if they've met the person before, yeah. help that person remember where you've met. I've had so many people come up to me and say, do you remember me? And I just feel terrible. <laughs> So, uh, you, you know, we met at in Cartagena in the producer meetings, and I can say, oh, yeah, right, I remember what's the name of your project, which is usually how I remember people. So help people when, uh, and also size it up. If they, if it doesn't feel like the right environment, then just say, you know, I'd love to, did you see a movie or create a personal connection, and then say, I'd love to set up a, 15 minute meeting with you later on or something like that. Don't always feel that you have to pitch in the moment. And I think that's something that people, when you're first starting out, don't always recognize. Yeah, and it's like, well, I have another opportunity to sit with this person. I have them right now. I got to jump on them and I got to give them everything and I got to do it fast. I think you get nervous and you just spit it all out. Absolutely. And everyone does at all yeah. levels. I also think key to remind yourself is that they're first interested in you, right. then they're interested in the project, because we rarely work with somebody we don't like. Yeah. And I, I liked what you said too, like take an interest in the person that you're, you're talking to, and, and you know, I think more of us need to do that as human beings, not you know, just, uh, just pictures of writers and, and directors. So. And, and for me, if you prepare, if it's a prepared pitch, meaning you're having a one-to-one, you should know in advance what questions you want to ask that person because even if they don't like your project, you have answers to industry questions based on their expertise because whatever, whoever they are, they know more than you do in their area as you do in your area. So to take advantage of that and ask questions, then you build on your industry experience. I have just one more question for you and it's about markets and when should a filmmaker, a writer, a director, at what point in their career should they be going to markets like Berlin, um, the um, European film market, or the American film market? Well, I, somebody can correct me on this, but I'm not sure writers and directors have an advantage going to those markets unless they Is go it more, to the Okay, it's more of a producer. Well, because in the end, you're looking for financial, financing partners. You're not, if you're a writer, you generally have to find a producer in your own country and you don't need right. to come to a market. But I do think there's nothing more valuable, and God bless the writers that do this, to get out into the marketplace to see what the market right, is and how it's done. Well, no, what they're looking at, what okay. they want, oh, right? Okay. So that's not, all part of the research. It's part of the research. I mean, we're not, especially in Canada, that. Rightly or wrongly, we're not always writing for the commercial marketplace, but we should always, always be working for a marketplace. We should always have an audience in mind. So you come here and you see what the movies are and what the reaction is and what the selling is. You're getting a sense of what a certain marketplace is looking for. And I'm saying marketplace uh, and the big picture rather than stalls. Yeah.